Hey guys, Jeff Barber here from RC Universe and today you're probably looking at this video wondering why on earth I have a radio control car sitting behind me on my bench. That's a good question and I'm going to answer that. Now a lot of us have older RC cars. This one, in, for example, I bought for my kids a few years ago. They've outgrown it, but you know what? I kept on, kept a hold of it for sentimental reasons, you know, whatever. Um, the problem with this car is it was designed to run on nickel metal hydride batteries, which they don't last very long. They tend to wear out quickly, and they also tend to die quickly, and they're no good if, if not taken care of properly. It was my kid's car. Of course, they didn't take care of them properly. Well, again, you're still probably wondering why I've got this here, and I'm glad you asked because we've got a new product available from Actobotics and Servo City that's going to let me run this old car that was designed to run on a nickel metal hydride battery. I've converted it so I can run it on a lithium polymer battery and not destroy my new bat my lithium batteries. If you're interested, stick around. Let me re uh, readjust my camera here and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, what makes this work? How am I going to change this so that I can run a car designed to run on a nickel metal hydride and change it so that I can run it on a lithium polymer battery? Let's get the top off and take a look. <clears throat> so what I've got here is the new Actobotics low voltage cutoff switch. And it's a simple device, it's a small board that goes in line between your power source and your speed control in this case. And as you can see, I've got it wired up right here. It's pretty simple. I made a connector for one end and just connected it to the, the speed control on the other end. There's three jumpers here, or three pins here for a jumper, and depending on where you put the jumper is going to depend on your voltage. This is good for a one, two, and three cell LiPos. One is going to be a three volted three volt cutoff. The second position or no jumper is a six volt and if you have it over between pins two and three that's a nine volt cutoff for a three cell lipo. Pretty simple. The only thing I had to do to get it to this setup right here is I soldered these connectors on. If you're going to leave it permanently attached you can solder your wiring directly to the board. I chose not to so I can move it around if I need to. So that's that. It's pretty simple. And after I turn on my transmitter here, I just plug it in. You get a little green light stating that it's ready to rock and roll. And with that, we have control of the truck. I ran this a couple of weeks ago in, on, on a track and, and outside, and I actually got this thing to the point where the motor was just as hot as could be and the board withstood any abuse that I put at it. Uh, the, the, the board is good for 20 amps and I'm not getting anywhere near that kind of pull out of this. So it worked. It was awesome. And now I have a truck that I can let my kid go out and drive again if she should decide to do that. Or let's face it, if I want to go play with it. And I can put in a 5,000 milliamp lithium polymer battery, and I don't have to worry about destroying my batteries. So that's it for today. Hope you guys had a good time looking at this video. Again, Actobotics is the name. It's a low voltage cutoff switch. It can be used for lots of ap applications. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for airplanes if you're going to use a lithium polymer battery in an older brushed setup, just because when it does cut down, when the cutoff hits it's just going to shut everything off you're not going to have any power it's not a battery eliminator circuitry it's just a low voltage cutoff so ground vehicle i'd use it no problems robotics yeah, absolutely but i wouldn't use it in an airplane with that i'm going to sign off again for today thanks for watching guys have a great one